Hi everyone, I'm Laurenzo, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all SpongeBob games for the 360. SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton's Robotic Revenge is the only game from this list available also on the PS3. That's why the title doesn't say anything about the PS3. The PlayStation 3 doesn't have SpongeBob games. That's why I'm not going to make a video about SpongeBob games for the free for the PS3. But luckily for the 360, there are SpongeBob games. But at least the PS3 has a solid game, somewhat. One that gets dull, but still, the game is solid. It gets repetitive, it's true, but it still remains a solid game from start to finish. It's a platformer beat-em-up. You jump from one platform to the other and then go to portions where you pass only after defeating each enemy. To your aid, you can either normal attack or shoot your pickle gun or other guns, you have a variety of different guns, that even if they look different, I haven't noticed any difference between them, in stats. I mean, they all look different but behave the same. But at least it's nice that each of the 5 characters in the game feels slightly different when you normal attack. The gun attack and the guns are the same for each character, but at least the normal attack which you won't use that often anyways, but at least it feels different. An aspect I didn't like was that you couldn't manually target. The game targets for you, which means that in some really crowded portions, you won't take down specific enemies just because the auto-aim goes all over the place. But at least it, it works well in boss battles. The boss battles are all against giant plankton robots. You avoid the variety of attacks the robots throw at you and aim for the eye. You also have some skydiving levels, that's the name given in the game. Skydiving. I'm not making this up. Where you have to avoid some wooden planks. It's hard to judge the distance there, but at least the levels are short. And you also get some chasing levels in this game. Overall the game is solid. It gets very repetitive, it's true, and maybe even dull, but still, I can't really complain or call it a bad game. It's decent, but it gets dull and repetitive too. SpongeBob Hero Pants looks like a good game, the first half hour you play, but the more you play, the worse it gets. The controls are nice and responsive and the level design seem passable at first, but then you stumble upon some annoying invisible walls and some collectibles that can be accessed only if you play with a certain character or in co-op, so if you don't have friends you can complete the game 100%. The game has some bad textures and enemies pass through textures more than they should. Also, you will think that such a game wouldn't have this problem, but it does. It has frame rate issues. And also, during the gameplay, you will hear the same lines from all of the characters repeated so many times that it gets annoying. Okay, now that I've told you the downsides, let me tell you the upsides of the game. It's a basic platformer. If you like platformers, you know what you're up to in the game. Also you get to play with 6 characters, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, Mr. Krabs and Plankton. Each one behaves kind of the same, the difference is that their animations are different. Oh, and you get only one boss fight in the entire game, which is sad. The game consists of 15 levels and every 5 levels the scenery changes, so you get 3 locations total. At least it's nice that the enemies change appearance too, every 5 levels. You get some upgrades to do on a character of your choosing, but after upgrading you feel as if nothing changed. Oh, and the game has also superpowers, which you can use for a brief time, and that brief time is very anticlimactic. So overall, the game is a generic platformer that feels like a cash-in. It has some originality to it, and the game developers integrated some creative level designs, but even if the theory sounds good, you will see on yourself that the game gets progressively more and more boring the more you play, and the frame rate issues 
and unsatisfying gameplay elements will eventually lead you most probably to the same conclusion as mine. SpongeBob Truth or Square is amazing. You can see in the little details that this game is a result of hard work. There are animations everywhere, whether they are facial expressions or the animation SpongeBob leaves when he leaves trails on the ice when he slides. Every corner of the game has attention to detail. In the game SpongeBob tries to remember where he put the secret formula, so he tries to remember and gets through multiple memorable episodes. You don't play the episodes, but you play in levels inspired by those episodes. SpongeBob has different attacks he can perform, you have the spatula attack and the wheel attack. And if you are in muscle bob form, you deal more damage and SpongeBob turns into a hammer and a propeller. They are the same as the spatula and the wheel attack, but they deal more damage. SpongeBob can also absorb water, and you can use this form to solve puzzles and attack enemies. Also, there are three special attacks one where Patrick uses SpongeBob as a hammer, one where Sandy uses SpongeBob as a karate glove, and one where Squidward uses SpongeBob as a clarinet. The level designs are great. The more you progress, the more stuff you'll find to do in the game. The creative and colorful visuals of the game are really great. The only downside is its length. It takes you only 3 hours and a half to finish the game. For Xbox standards, the game is kind of short. Oh, and occasionally the camera doesn't control that well. But overall, this game is amazing. You can see the attention to detail everywhere. I totally recommend this game. I liked it a lot. I even incline to call it a masterpiece. SpongeBob Surf and Skate Road Trip is a really bad game. First, the biggest no-no in the game are the controls. This is a Kinect game, and you steer by moving one of your two feet. And you can change stances too. In theory, it sounds good, but in practice, the camera never got my movements well. I could barely go in a straight line. It was either full left or full right. The skating levels look like some dumbed down version of Tony Hawk Downhill Jam. But the surfing levels look way too far fetched. I mean, I know that you should never question realism in a video game, but just look at these waves. The surfing part of the game is actually just a reskinned downhill jam, but with surfing instead. And the bad controls make the game horrible. Most of the time you'll just get annoyed by the bad controls. If you see this game, just run away. It's terrible. Avoid it. SpongeBob SquarePants Underpants Slam is an Xbox arcade game. And it's very dull. It's a collected long game. The game has 10 levels and you collect underpants in all of them. This is all you do in the game. It doesn't sound exciting, right? That's because it isn't. All you do is do platforming. But at least it's nice that the game has co-op. In rest, it's a dull game I don't recommend you play. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.